What's going on, wrestling fans? Welcome to the Tapped In Indie Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Heath Mulligan, joined by the man behind all the controls, the wizard himself, Nick McDaniel. Nick, how are you this morning? Good, man. Uh, Look, it was a crazy weekend. Um, It it was an indie wrestling weekend in the sense of the word. As card was subject to change, everything I had planned, everything I thought we had mapped out, completely turned on a dime and uh we'll get into a little bit of that you know obviously as we go along yeah one of the few things that didn't change uh for my weekend i had a long vacation but part of that vacation was going on a little trip and if you were a patron you would already know about it we dropped some content about that so go to patreon.com slash tapped out pod also go to youtube hey you have to subscribe you got to hit that like button on all our videos. You got to hit that bell to get all the notifications. And maybe you're not a video person. Hey, we've still got audio everywhere Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, uh, you know, CB Radio, anywhere you can listen to audio. Listen, the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast Network. We are everywhere. We want you to get all the news, we want you to get the best coverage that you can find. And so let's just jump right in to the Indie Rewind, because even though Card was subject to change, a lot was going on. Uh, You had a very unexpected special trip. Why don't you tell everybody what your weekend with Rachel was? Yeah, man. So obviously Friday I had told everybody I was out of pocket for some personal stuff that I had to attend. Um, Congrats to Stu, Rachel's uh, co-teacher. He had a retirement party that we went to. Uh, but then on Saturday, I had planned on possibly doing a double shot. Definitely Southern Fried was on the card. But a uh, friend of the show, Frankie Paris, hit me up, uh, just kind of chatting with him. And he kind of slips in there. He's getting inducted to a Hall of Fame thing. And I was like, wait, what? And he mm-hmm. said, yeah, man. And he, you know, he's like, hey, you should come. And I'm like, absolutely. I'm really weird about, and it's funny, I'm really weird about friends you know look i've known frankie for years love the guy love his family awesome uh but so my rule is simply if some friends like that reach out to me and they're like hey why don't you come if i can i go and it's just that simple uh so and it was funny the wife and i were in the car we were actually heading somewhere and she just looked at me and she was like you want to go and i'm like you you want to go she's like Let's go. I mean, literally, it was that simple. So we hmm. two and a half hour commute up to Chattanooga, and so what they had a there was a con, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher the con's name. It was Metro Fam Con. Uh, it was it's a cosplay comic. They had Funko Pops, you know, all that kind of stuff. Your typical con uh, actually had some really big names there. Wow. Uh, the voice of Ariel and Kanto, like a lot of Disney names. Uh, Lou Ferrigno was there. Wow. Uh, as well. So, yeah. And then, of course, uh, the big wrestling name that was there, Mick Foley was there doing some autographs and stuff. Uh, but the, I, we were going, obviously, because uh, Frankie was being inducted to uh, the Wrestling for a Cause Hall of Fame. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wrestling for a Cause, give them a follow on social media. Uh, they do a lot of good stuff. They 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 raise money donate money, you know, for these kids who need the help for with medical conditions and things like that. Um, so it's, look, you're going to hear more about them. I talked to them a little bit, and I was really interested in what they're doing. So we're going to do a little more. And I've even, you know, offered them a platform to come on and talk and kind of explain, that, you know, to what, what they do. Uh, I think, look, we've talked about, like, our affinity for promotions that are doing things for a good cause and that That's kind of right. stuff. So uh, I told them, they were like, hey, do you think we can – talk a little, I'm like, dude, absolutely. If this is what the work you're doing and to see it, you know, that we, I saw some of the kids there that they've helped and things like that. Cause they, uh, part of what they do, that hall of fame, they induct the children that they help uh-huh. into the that's hall of fame. Like, awesome. That's actually what the hall of fame is. It's not, there's two wrestlers now in right. Frankie was the second and it's because of the hard work that Frankie did and helped them get off the ground and stuff like that. So kind of like for me, I always tell people it's an honor for me for Frankie to even ask me to come to something like that. So absolutely to jump in the car and make that trip um, was cool. So again, wrestling for a cause, give them a follow and check them out. Uh, They're based up there in that Chattanooga, that Tennessee area. So uh, if you're up in that area, give them a follow and go see a show, man. Help. I mean, 
I always tell people like if you love indie wrestling, that's that's a it's a bonus to know that the, the money's going to for a great cause. On top of you get to see some cool wrestling because like uh, you know I when I when he told me the name of the promotion, I had I'd heard of them obviously, but I hadn't mm-hmm. seen any of their shows in person. But it was cool to walk in the locker room and. Zicky Dice is there, Stunt Marshall's there, Danny Jordan's there, you know, uh, Shalonda Roller. So, so there was a lot of people that I reckon. I was like, oh, okay. So it was kind of a, you know, it was surprising to me that I was like, oh, these, you know, it's Georgia talents. So clearly they're Tennessee talents as well. So it was fun. Yeah, and they, they rolled out the red carpet for you guys. And, and that continues to blow me away. Just um, the warmth and acceptance uh, that we we receive wherever we go most of the time from these promotions uh, just really, really blows us away. Uh, yeah. One of the promotions that rolls out the red carpet for us is Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. They had a great show Saturday night. They are setting up the biggest show of the year, Shindig, coming up June 15th. And these are the matches we've got announced so far. We've got uh, Southern Fried owner David Manders against Nick Kalen in a street fight. They are going to finally settle this score. Well, I think because we discussed this a little bit last week, right? That look, if it was a wrestling match, Nick Halen is at a huge advantage. Um, but when you go to a street fight, all right, we've kind of leveled the playing field because now we're talking about brawling, fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of levels the playing field a little bit for David. And uh, look, he he looked pretty strong taking that chair to Adrian Hawkins, you know, at this <laughs> at this show. Um, we did get some, like, I didn't make the show, but thank you. Hey, shout out to the promotion, Adam Vance specifically for sending that footage over so we could take a look at it and watch it beforehand. And, uh, Hey, with that chair, that was an equalizer. He took out Adrian Hawkins. So, uh, it's a, it's a something Nick Halen probably needs to pay attention to That's I agree with that. Uh, we got, uh, the classic championship is going to be on the line in a six man ladder match. Billy Buck will call caution Jackson Carter, uh, the Wall, Kenway, Aaron Dallas, a little mix of everything there. Guys that have been around, new talents. Uh, that could be a star-making match, much like the latter matches at WrestleMania have been in the past. Yeah, it. Uh, it the, look, it's. I will tell you this in the history. Ladder matches are tough on the indies. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen a couple promotions pull them off very well, uh, and Southern Fried is one of those promotions. They do really well. It's kind of it's. I promise you, you'll be surprised um, because it's. Look, they're tough to pull off in an AEW WWE environment, much less an indie promotion. But they do a really good job of it, and the a lot of the talents in that one, uh, I think, have an opportunity to shine and make make a name for themselves. Uh, Xavier Reyes taking on Hunter James in singles action. You got Texi taking on uh, Jacob Ashworth. That is going to be. Uh, as the kids say, a hoss fight. Yep. Uh, the Southern Fried Women's title on the line, Crystal Rose defending against, surprisingly, a name out of nowhere, uh, Danny Jordan, who is really trying to get back into that female wrestler of the year form. And this could be a huge rung on that ladder of getting back to that top spot. Uh, I have a hot take on Danny Jordan. Uh, I think what people need to be careful of is like, you know, I don't know that she, this is no disrespect, by the way, to the, um, to the to the award. I preface this. I don't know that Danny cares about being the female wrestler of the year in Georgia anymore. She because we, we talked about it like, hey, she was I just saw her in Tennessee. Uh, I know she's starting to travel out more. Uh, I think if I think Danny's goal is if she's going to make this run. Right. I think she's ready to make a run and not yeah. like, Hey, I'm a Georgia wrestler. No, I think right. she's ready to shoot to that next level. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the big main event that has been building and building and building CT keys, challenging Judas for that Southern fried championship wrestling heavyweight title. Can the boys and girls club contain this match between these two behemoths? Uh, Look, it's uh, we've talked about Judas a lot uh, because I think he's is he lar- Yeah, we joke about it all the time, right? Is he larger than Georgia? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, look, he he's a Georgia champion, hundred mm-hmm. percent, but he's larger than Georgia. Uh, 
like I went on a campaign months and months ago about CT keys, about why is this guy not in more places? He's, you know, he is the epitome. If he rolls out, he looks like a wrestler. Like, oh my God, you know, this guy's an athlete, you know. Um, I don't think Southern Fried goes wrong with either one of these guys as their champion. Right. Um, and it's, this one's a t- this is probably one of the toughest, like main events to call in a long time because a lot of times you kind of know mm-hmm. this guy's ready, it's his time. But it is really, really hard to say Judas is about to drop a championship anywhere. That's right. Uh, very true. And he's, you know, at the next Southern Honor show, he's facing Gunnar Miller. So Judas is running the gauntlet him, himself. Uh, as as a champion so again that's june 15th shindig with southern fried so uh you want to be a part of that classic city uh wrestling was uh working over the weekend they had a great tri- uh, triple threat match uh, skrilla versus owen knight and uh, rico g was added to that to make a great triple threat uh Nogicism uh continues to ch- kind of change his ways a little bit and kind of turn his back on on the fans, and that just seems to be happening everywhere he goes now. It's uh, yeah, his uh, I think the personality is of Naja as a whole has turned. You know, uh, if we we're doing a Star Wars, he's turning to the dark side, right? That's the uh, the way we would use that analogy, possibly. But uh, I think, yeah, I think the state as a whole. By the way, little tip of the cap there. Um, nothing drives me more crazy than. Baby face heel, baby face heel, baby face heel. It's, um, I understand the, I understand why it happens. So, you know, tapped out pod and gmail.com, send all the hate mail. Um, I understand why it happens. But I wish there were more guys that were like, no, I'm a heel. No, yeah. I'm a baby face. You know, like, this is who I am. I'm a, I'm a brand and this is my brand. Right. Um, you know, like, oh, you, you want to give me, this is back, whoop, we'll jump back one show that we're talking about. Um, kudos to Jacob Ashworth. Like that's his thing. He's like, hey, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a baby face, and it's he wrestles pretty much everywhere. And I know he's done the heel thing, but in the past, mm-hmm. but when you see him on a card, you, you know what you're getting with Jacob Ashworth. You're not confused about. Oh, I need to see what he does when he comes out. Oh, is he a baby face or a heel here? No, Jacob Ashworth is a baby face. Looks like we're heading down the path of Naja's the, you know, uh, he's he's the he's the heel. He's he, you know, he's he's going heel. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Duncan Mitchell, Matt Sales. Uh, what I'm hearing was a was a brutal fight. Looking forward to watching that on video. Uh, a promotion we don't talk about a whole lot, but is very near and dear to my heart. Three Count Pro Wrestling in the Greenville area. Saturday night they had their Three Count Pro Twenty, which is their kind of Royal Rumble, except they combine the Royal Rumble with Money in the Bank. So if you win the Pro Twenty Battle Royal. You get the briefcase, and you can you can cash it in. And a young man named Jacob Armachain, who trained at Three Count, I've I've watched his career from the beginning. I've watched this man grow as a performer, as a as a young man too. Won the Pro Twenty, and cashed in on none other than George's own Drew Adler uh, to become the new Three Count Heavyweight Champion. I was watching videos. Uh, my good friend Scottish Prince Joshua uh, O'Glesby ret- made his return in the Pro 20. And and from people who aren't involved with three count, Brett Wolverton said it was the, one of the loudest pops he'd heard at an indie show when Jacob Armour chain. And three count continues just to do really well. And again, kudos to Jacob Armour chain. Just a talented, talented young man um, who I would love to see I would love to see him in, in Georgia. Uh, he's a high flyer. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm anxious to see how three count goes with him as their uh, champion. Uh, yesterday, we had a new promotion debut. It was a show I was planning on going to, had some personal stuff I was attending to, and that's Scrappy Championship Wrestling. They were going to crown three champions yesterday. Kudos, again, another young man I've seen his entire career. Raylan Alby from the Palmetto Wrestling Academy won what I think is his first championship. He was he won that 
world heavyweight title kind of mini tournament there. Marcus Men uh, Menos won the middleweight title. They also had a lightweight championship that was held up. The match never took place. Competitors were jumped before the bell. Uh, we've talked about before. Scrappy's trying to do uh, some things a little different. Matter of fact, Marcos Menos, the match he won was by decision. It went to a time limit. They went to the judges. He won by decision over uh, Luke De Silva. So, again, another promotion. That, and you crown three champ, or, or you're trying to crown three champions in your first show. I've never seen that. Never even heard of that. That's super ambitious. Yeah, ambitious is the good is the good word. They're there in the Royston Dome. Haven't heard when their next show is going to be uh, quite yet. Premier R, uh, Premier All Star Wrestling. They're back. Try to get reestablished there in Buchanan, Georgia, in West Georgia. We don't talk about West Georgia a lot, but thank you know, thanks to Premier for sending us some information. Yeah, look, I mean, look, they've been around about fifteen months or so. They're so relatively young promotion. Um, they, here's the thing: you West Georgia, you know, was pretty barren there for a little bit when uh, Peach State kind of faded out. That was a uh, it was rough there for a while. Um, look, are there promotions there? Yes, but I mean, as far as something super hot, super going, uh, and kudos from Premier All Star. Like they, they were when they kind of started. They were one of those forty, fifty crowds, you know, shows. And uh, here's we talked about this last week about crowd numbers. Okay, this is a promotion that I would I want to give them the credit for, like understanding what we discussed, and it was not they understood it before we discussed it, but that's the importance of listening. The attendance is a tool, not the tool. But they understand, hey, we were doing 40, 50. Now we're closer to 200. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how we talked about a success is, you know, all relative? That's a success, folks. There's yeah. somebody out there drawing 500, probably crapping on that 200 number, and they're completely off base. Yeah, that's right. They, they have grown that business. That's a 5X, They've you know, their crowd. Um Hey, when that 500 draws 2,500, let me know. That's a 5X. So it, that's what we're talking about being relative. Um, so I know their next show's June 1st. Um, if you look, give them a try, dude. And we, we talk about it all the time. You will be surprised. Like, I know sometimes, you know, hey, I've never heard of them. Then how can you judge them? Right. You know, go try right. them. Go check them out. Um, there's every promotion under the sun out there that we tell you, like, that was our mission, right? Like, we're going to try to go out and see smaller mm -hmm. shows. Look, it's honestly, you want to know why? another reason why I did the Wrestling for a Cause show? I hadn't seen them. Right. Like, look, I'm going to Shindig. I know I'm going to Shindig. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's a given. So I was like, all right, so I'm going to have to miss this one to go catch this one. So, but that's a premier all-star. Check them out. Dude. Like, I get it, dude. They're, they're, they're still growing. They're learning. All of those good things, like every promotion. Because, by the way, 15 months in, if you're not still learning, you know, like, hey, they, <laughs> they are. And I'll give them kudos. They acknowledge all of these things. That's what I always do. Self-awareness, know how they're growing. And uh, I, I'm really excited to see another promotion there in West Georgia, which, hey, look, there is another one we're going to discuss here in a little bit. But, yes. It would be very interesting to talk to them and see what they attribute to that growth. And I would love to see, you know, what are what are these new promotions doing to get content out there, video, promos, whatever. Uh, but I should ask, they are going to do a YouTube channel to kind of nice. get their stuff out there. So, yeah, that, that was brought up to me as well, that that is coming down the road. So you'll be able to check out their product ahead of time to, you know. Because, look, they if one of the clear things we've talked about on these – Look, I'm not again. It's not a disrespect. It's a smaller promotion. They're mm -hmm. kind of getting their legs under them. You're giving guys opportunities. Oh, let's by the way, let's make sure they get footage of their opportunities so they can get that out to the you know what like the other bigger shows. And I'm throwing air quotes up there. See that see their work in the ring, not just hear about it. And they get an opportunity even on you know some of the bigger shows as well. Yeah, pretty pretty awesome stuff. Southern states. Uh, was at Monkey Ranch Brewing in Sewanee, Georgia. Uh, Sal Renar and Aaron Dallas had a banger of a match. Uh, the question for Southern States is what does the future hold? They made some announcements last week that they're 
move in move in venues and their next show is going to be june 23rd at steady hand brewing company eva lease is going to be there uh so that's you know southern states always does a pretty good job of of trying to have a little star power there uh and so put that on your calendar you're always going to get some good work but again kind of what's the future hold for southern states at this point yeah, I mean, look, you know, shout out Myron. He was our correspondent there. He, yes, he right. went. He he didn't make it. Um, checked it out. Put put the show over. It's a great show. He look. Southern states is always a fun show. No matter where you can catch them, I always encourage people to go out and check them out. Just, it's always an entertaining show, for, to say the least. Um, so, look, I, I know. I think they're going to be moving over to that other venue for a while. Um, but hopefully, we get them back here. We loved having them on this side of town. Um. Uh, because it's so close to the house. I mean, I always love when venues are close to the house. So, yeah, that's all. That's always good. Well, whether or not a venue is close to your house or not, fans, you need to be thinking about uh, making the drive. This last weekend, I made the drive down to Atlanta to see the last match, a wrestling musical. If you're a patron, you have already heard. You've already heard. Uh, the great review, the one-of-a-kind review, I took a professional singer with me, Dr. Amber James, who's also a university instructor. She is the director of student productions. I want it. She's never been to a wrestling show. You are going to get. It is the most unique review of this musical. It was, spoiler alert, it was great, and we loved it. Uh, you can actually listen to the album on Apple Music and... It, it again surprising surprisingly good now next weekend there's not a lot we were looking through the calendar but sca they're every friday in the royston dome it's memorial day weekend don't know if you fans know there's a little bit of controversy at sca on friday night uh we won't dive too deep into that is that going to carry over to friday night show who knows can I look? We didn't discuss this because we're not going to dive into the topic. The topic itself, I I'm just shaking my head. Um, but do I think it affects them? No. Yeah, I really don't. I, 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 I agree. look at. I don't. I don't. I just. I don't think it changes anything. And that's look. That's not me picking a side or any side. That's just me going. I don't think it changes anything. I think they'll be you know right in their wheelhouse. So they'll be fine. I I could not agree with you more. We also want to let you know about. A new promotion. This was actually announced maybe two weeks ago. Bullpen Pro Wrestling. Uh, they're coming to Bowden, Georgia, June 8th. Bowden High School there. Uh, they're doing a TV title tournament and their big main event. Uh, Judas is taking on Elijah Drago, a guy that I'm not too familiar with. But that is going to be a great match. And this is a new promotion coming to a new part of the state. And again, an opportunity for fans to check out some great wrestling action. Yeah, I think uh, this is the uh, Bull Buchanan is associated yes. with this. Obviously, with the name, it makes sense, right? Um, so I, I think you're going to see – it'll be one of those promotions where specifically you're going to see some names you're familiar with. Um, look, by the way, because I, I know a lot of people think like this is – I had somebody – I said this to somebody, and they looked at me and said, oh, is that a shot? I'm like, it's not a shot, dude. If I was if I was a – what I was going with, you're going to see familiar names because Bull knows people, and Bull's going right. to pull – you know. He's going to do the buddy card and get, you know, hey, come on in and do a do an appearance. And I'm like, look, if I had a promotion, I would do the same thing. Yes. I mean, like, hey, oh, I don't know. I ran one show. And guess what right. I did? Hey, buddy, would you you want to do this for, you know, let me if I, like, hey, I paid him. But still, like, hey, I, it helped me. Relationships are key. We talk about that all the time in wrestling. Yeah. You know, uh, Paul Walter Hauser at Southern Honor. On and on and on. Like, these things happen, right? Right. Um. So, yeah, I, I check them out. I think it's, it's a. We're getting a lot of promotions. That is my only, you know, and uh, so I think what's going to happen over time, we will see some of these promotions come and go. Um, but this one, you know, like I said, having some power, having some, you know, relationships there, I think gives them a leg up. But time will tell, you know, in the long term. That's right. That's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good se segue uh, to this week's mailbag. Uh, and our first question you just talked about, you know, promotions coming and going. Peter from Sugar Hill, Georgia says, 
What do you guys consider the big three or four promotions in Georgia? So who are the promotions that have shown a little staying power? I would say consistent crowds, buzz, in-ring action, uh, consistency of shows. You know, they're not taking long breaks. Um, here's here's the ones that I threw out. By the way, yeah. I want a disclaimer here. There is no order of, like, well, this isn't a ranking. I know as soon as I saw the list and in, in our notes, we were going back and forth. I'm like, hey, don't take offense to this because if you're in the big four, you, that's the tip of the cap to you. It's We're not ranking you four to one. No. Go ahead. Sorry. I didn't want to. This, this just happened to be the order. I t Matter of fact, I'm just going to read them in alphabetical order. There How you about go. that? There you go. There I'm just going to read them in alphabetical order. Number one, A, action starts with A. And uh, that's action wrestling uh, the, in Tyrone, Georgia. We just went to our first action show. They've got SCI coming up this summer. They got the SCI Futures. Hey, um, I want a disclaimer in here. I hate to cut you off here, but it's Tyrone. It's Noonan. I saw they're, yeah. associated, they're associated with a show in Athens that's coming up soon. Uh, we're going to talk about that down, down the road, not today. But um, so, like, look, they're they're associated they just, with a lot of towns. They just had a show last Thursday night. Totally forgot about yeah. that. Um, so Action Wrestling's right hold there. Hold on, hold on. I, yeah, because we did. But here's the problem. When they do a Thursday thing, it's, it gets kind of goes off cycle <laughs> sometimes. But they had a brawl that went out into the parking lot with Priest and Cruel, which, by the way, check it out on IWTV, the Fight Fight Club in Noonan, when it's on IWTV, um, which was total madness. And by the way, if you want to see some crazy madness, I'm really segueing him. I'm really on a sidebar here. Uh, you got to follow Cruel, the atrocity Cruel on social media to see some of the craziness. Dude is insane. I don't know if you saw the plate spot where he had uh, this, this past week. One on his chest, one on his head, continues the match, rips the one out of his chest, and then the worst, oh, it was just gruesome, pulls the one out of his head, so the blood's just running all down the mask, and he still picks up a victory. So, Sorry, I, I know he's associated heavily with action, which what what head me down that sidebar. But uh, action's a promotion you just can't miss. I, I don't think you just can't miss. And their next show, they got their first cage match between the aforementioned Cruel and, and Adam Priest. That's going to mm -hmm. be very interesting. Next, uh, alphabetically, is <laughs> IWE in Augusta, Georgia. And now in Lexington, North Carolina, they've got, a show coming up in Lexington. They're starting to announce matches for that. Uh, continuing again, alphabetically, Southern Hold Fried. On. Oh, sorry. Bex, Bexplex, they're, in, they're actually running a yes. different building in North Augusta, which is South Carolina, right? South Carolina. So yeah. here's the thing about South Carolina wrestling fans. South Carolina regulates pro wrestling. We talk about crowd numbers sometimes in South Carolina, you have to report your crowd numbers. You have to record your, uh, gate receipts and all of that is available via the freedom of information act. So, uh, I find all those forms fascinating because I've had to fill them out before. Yeah. And, uh, I, listen, IWE has not rested on their laurels. No, they, they are going all in and, and, uh, Kudos, kudos to them. Under the and now under the stewardship of James Caleb Kitchens, going to rise to new heights per per him. Trust me, he's reached out on Messenger and said he's going to take that company to heights it's never seen before because now true leadership has the reins. So we shall see. Time will tell. <laughs> Uh, Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. They're one of the big three. They have been around probably of these four. They're the oldest of these four by far. Um, and they just yes. continue every two weeks putting it out. Uh, you know, Shindig has become one of the big shows in, in the state. Um, and they just, you know, they just continue to do what they do. They know who they are. They stay in their lane. And they're very successful at it. Do you, they're a cup of tea. Sorry, I keep throwing these little notes in for each one. No, that's there's good. A, here's the thing. There's a reason why. And, I, you know, they all have their reasons. Um, actions for what it is. IWE's grown. You know, they put on some some great matches as well. Southern Fried Strength Storytelling. Um, I love it. There's a tons of talent at that show. We've talked about this a couple of weeks ago, maybe, maybe last week. 
it's the talents are exceptional there. But I think their keys to success at Southern Fried Championship Wrestling are the storytelling abilities of one Todd Sexton and the uh, love and support and the uh, the backing that that crowd, that fan base gives David Manders. Like, that's that's their strength. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why they are one of the big four if we, you know, we're putting that list together. Uh, and then, uh, again, fourth alphabetically, you talk about a promoter being beloved. And that is uh, Southern Honor Wrestling, Gary Lamb. They've they've taken Canton. They've taken Georgia by storm. They continue to do what they do. They continue to do things other promotions don't do. And uh, they just continue to move right along. And they've got some big shows coming up through the summer. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we've got a big show coming up where Gunnar Miller's facing Judas. Then we've got the Rumble Jet coming up, and that's all roads lead down into, obviously, their anniversary show still here. But it's kind of a very sim- – there's a lot of similarities, by the way. It's crazy to me that the, the, the similarities, if you peel it back a little bit, Southern Fried and Southern Honor are very similar, yet look so different. Yes. Um, it's built off of a lot of the, the – one of, to me, one of the biggest – What's the word I'm looking for? Um, mis- unju- I'm trying to look up the right word. It's it's very it's not very just. I don't think here. Right. That Dylan doesn't get the you know like the storytelling love that Todd does, mm-hmm. and I just don't think people see it. Um, and I know I look I I can come why like when there's a lot of flair, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of the names those type of things that kind of draw the attention away from the fact that there's some really good storytelling, if you pay attention, going on at Southern Honor. There's, you know, so the storytelling, uh, and look, these banks banking stuff off of Todd, we all understand that there's people there, but Dylan's really, really good at it. You forget how young he is is the other part of that equation of, you know, there's a there's an added thing there with Todd of, you know, his his uh, his experience, uh, you like that, Todd? Experience. I didn't call you old. as the other experience, um, but but the similarities of the storytelling aspect. There's your two connective tissues. But then also, there is nothing. Like if people ask me, like, "Hey, is there anybody as beloved in Georgia by that fan base?" Kind of like a you know David Manders. It's Gary Lamb. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's a tough call to make, but because Gary's fan base is loyal. You know, and do they will follow Gary almost anywhere yeah. up in that town. So I think that's the similarities that I talk about. You you mentioned something, and I really don't know where I want to go with this. You mentioned Dylan bouncing ideas off of Todd. When you look at that list of four, IWE's kind of on their own. Like the the guys from IWE backstage Kitchens, Fields, Blackman. They're not. Do you see what I'm saying? And I, and they've still been super successful in their own right. Um, but you kind of see, we've seen over the last year or so, Matt Griffin and Gary Lamb and David Manders, we've seen these partnerships forming. And we've seen a crossover universe happen in those three uh, promotions. And I'm curious. Oh, can I throw an analogy in? Yeah. Action, Southern Fried, Southern Honor exist in the Marvel Universe. That's I right. You ESDC. <laughs> Don't not tell. Negative, not a negative connotation. Not- I'm just saying in that aspect. Oh, hey, look, okay, if you want to do it, they're the uh, the animated universe of DC. He'll he'll appreciate that more. They're not yes. the D, they're not the DCU movie thing. Yeah. The, you know, so anyway. Um, but that's that's fascinating to me, and, and I'd be curious to see if that ever does happen. If IWE, it, that would be that would be very curious, interesting yeah. to see. I we did I did want to say, I did want to talk about a few promotions that are nipping at the heels of these what we consider the big four. And listen, tappedoutpod at gmail dot com. Go ahead and tell us how wrong we are. Tell us your promo- listen. That no, it's tell all us subjective. your thoughts. Because here is the thing: like, he, hey, I want to throw right in there. There, your big four could be for totally different reasons. Yes. Like if all your favorite wrestlers wrestle at these other four promotions, they're going to be your favorite. That's fine. 
We're just telling our thoughts and our opinion. So absolutely tap tap pod at gmail.com. Share your thoughts and hey, that's fine. Um, we, we're okay with that. Um, but go ahead. Sorry. I, was... I think Disruptor could easily uh, jump into that mix. Classic City, who we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, there there's multiple promotions that could easily, with consistency, crowds, buzz, in-ring action, storytelling, could easily. But listen, those those four we mentioned, you're going to have to knock them off. They're not going to give it to you. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I look, I hear – a lot about Classic City picking up the steam and getting a lot of that love. Um, Larry Otto's a one that doesn't get mentioned a lot. But here's the thing. How many promotions are bringing Matt Cardona in when he was healthy? You know, uh, Bryce mm-hmm. Cannon's their champion. So I think – is it potentially um, a time where we're starting to see a change of the guard in talent – that could therefore in the long term reflect the change of guard at the top when it comes to the promotions. That's a key thing that I think to watch out for. We are the kings of Segway today because one promotion that's not mentioned in that top four that used to be year in, year out, you could not talk about Georgia wrestling without saying the name Anarchy Wrestling. And that leads us to our next question from Tim from Cornelia, Georgia. Tim, thanks for getting in with us. Are you guys excited about the return of Hardcore Hell in June? Nick, I would love your thoughts on this as our Anarchy debuts at the Royston Dome. Yes. I think as a whole, Georgia is always better when Anarchy is strong. Um, There's something special about anarchy there always has been hey why are they not in your top four then okay because they haven't really run a lot of shows as of recent they're coming back literally like hey it's the return of anarchy to the royce and dome hardcore hell um i think from my understanding they're going to start running monthly shows after that Mm -hmm. so july august september you know on and on and on uh so i like i've seen some of the card look the main event itself I, I will tell you, hey, look, down the road, when we do another underappreciated, under, you know, uh, underrated, Shane Marks is a guy who I tell people all the time, never judge a book by its cover when it comes to Shane Marks. Mm-hmm. Um, I have seen him absolutely go in the ring. And when they announced that it's him versus Nick Kalen, I, I look back and said, hey, this is going to be a stellar stellar main event you know or for that title um Mm. because you're gonna have two of the absolute best in georgia going at it that's that's how you get nick invested right in in return of a card or a return of a promotion yeah on any given time anarchy is one that's right there and that the only reason they're not there is just due to the uh the the lack of activity of the promotion over the last few months and i know they did some stuff in monroe but you know they, they, it, this is this is this is a really crucial point for them. So I'm super excited about the show. For me, the jury's still out. I'm more excited to see if there's a July show, an August show, a Hardcore Hell 2025. Here's the thing: we take for granted Anarchy, Wildside. It was so connected with the Landmark Arena. For, and this is this is not this is new. If you are going into this expecting the anarchy of old, that's gone. That, and they've got to realize that too. They've got to realize we have to kind of start from scratch. It's still the same name, similar wrestlers. That's what I'm excited about. I'm not excited for just one show. Show me that you have a plan. Show me that you're in on this, that it's not just. Well, show, I kn- yeah. listen, I know they're all in. Um, I know they've helped upgrade the facilities hmm. there at the Royston Dome. Uh, lots of stuff that, that, you know, behind the scenes going on there. So I I know they're invested. I, I 100% believe I will 
stand behind this thing that you're going to see a July, you're going to see an August, you're going to see a September. I think I'm all in on those guys being a long-term, uh, you know, partner there. So I think, I think, uh, the question just becomes more of the, the, you know, something we're going to talk about here in a minute, I'm sure. Yes. Because Mitchell from Royston, thanks Mitch, wants to know, do you guys think all the promotions can survive together in the Royston Dome? You got Squared Circle Action Wrestling, Scrappy Championship Wrestling, Georgia Outlaw Wrestling, and Anarchy Wrestling. Four promotions, one building. What do you think, Nick? I would love, let's preface with, I hope so. Mm-hmm. I really do. I, I I would love nothing more for four promotions to run strong in that building and give that area just a huge shot in the arm with a lot of great shows for a lot of people to come see. We've always said, look, one of the things we were trying to be on this show was, you know, fair but critical, right? That was we that when we discussed the basis of the show, I said, mm-hmm. hey, I want a show where we're fair but critical. So to be fair, to be fair, I'd love for it to happen. Mm-hmm. To be honest with myself, I do not. I, I just cannot see four promotions sustaining in one building, uh, even on that regular of a schedule. Um, I know a lot of people are going to compare and say, hey, in the heyday, Landmark was running NCW. They were running Anarchy. They were promotion, you know, like promotions coming in from out of state. Disruptor ran there. Uh, Wildcat ran there. Like uh, multiple <laughs> promotions coming in. You want me to tell y'all a secret, by the way? And I hope, by the way, here here's the thing. I would love for the day. Let me let me please complete this train of thought before you like just completely flip out because I my brain works way ahead of what I'm saying. I promise you. And I said it in my head and was like, okay, somebody's going to lose their mind if you don't finish this thought. I would love to see the day that the Royston Dome, 40 years from now, people looked back on it fondly like they do the Landmark Arena. It's not going to happen, though. They, the, 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 the Landmark Arena was special in Georgia. That's why it could do what it did. Mm-hmm. Let me repeat, the Landmark Arena was special, and that's why you could pull off what they did in that building. I don't know. I don't know. I do know. The Royston Dome doesn't have that tradition and the love and the reverence that the Landmark Arena has. Do I think two promotions can make it there? Sure. I, I, I'll go that far. Three and four. I, I just don't. And I'm sorry to all those prom- – and I'm not even picking the promotions who are going to. May the best man win in that battle. I have my thoughts. I Do I – you know, who I think they're going to be? 100%. But I wish them all the best. I just can't see the four guys – I cannot see four promotions making it in the one building. Right. I, And in all fairness, could four NBA teams survive in the same arena – in Oklahoma city, maybe New York, the Clippers and Lakers couldn't even last together in the Staples center in Los Angeles or now the crypto crypto.com arena, the Clippers, because here's the thing that arena was built for two teams. It was specifically designed to house those two teams and still in their own arena, the Clippers were treated like second class citizens. So now, uh, Steve Ballmer for Microsoft, they're building their own arena. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. I think if you think two of the four is going to happen, one of them is going to be SCA. SCA literally holds the lease. They're not going anywhere. They, they're they calling all the shots. If they wake up next week and say, George Outlaw Wrestling, you're done. We, you know, when our contract with you's up, you're down. You, they hold all the cards. And so it's 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 gonna be fascinating. Fascinating to, to see. Um now, Sam from Norcross. Great question. And a great question to end this episode on. What promotions that you guys haven't made it to are you looking forward uh to making it out to soon? So what have we not hit? 
that's on our list, promotion shows uh, we want to see. We just talked about it. I want to hit a Royston Dome weekend. One of these weekends where they're running multiple shows, I want to head down to the Royston Dome. I want to see uh, see what's happening. Um, another promotion we've talked about, Classic City. Getting a lot of buzz. We just haven't been able to get – there's a lot of shows, people. We can't get to all of them. Uh, hey, listen, I've reached out. To, we've t- I've touched base with those guys. Hey, I want to appreciate – you know, listen – I don't think it's it's a lot to be uh, – my appreciation to to promoters, owners that reach out, respond. Like, hey, shout out to Justin, you know, for mm-hmm. responding um, for Classic City. I specifically said, here's the way, by the way, one of your talents reached out to me, told me what a banger of a show this was and how great mm-hmm. they enjoyed it. And I'm like – and he's like, hey, love to hear that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, let me know when the next show is. I can, I'm gonna put you on a ca- so. Here's how this is gonna work. Pull this curtain back a little bit. I've created a calendar, a Google calendar, for me, you, and Myron. To every time we see a poster online, to try to add that show, put the location. Oh, yeah. By the way, guys, it'll help to have start times, bell times, and mm-hmm. the actual address because I'm gonna put the addresses in them so we can see how far it is from us. Plan mm-hmm. our weekends. So that's why posters are good. Good posters are really good um, because we're trying to create a calendar so we can plan these things out to get to more shows. Um, it may not be all of us. We've talked about, look, I know there's a weekend in June, and I'm not getting into it right now, but there's a week in June. We've already planned out, hey, Myron, you're going to go to this show. I'm going to go to this show, and you know, and then you could. we're going to try to spread out as much as possible. But you want to be blunt, the blunt truth? There are shows that draw our attention so much that all three of us are like, I, we all want to go to that show. That's right. And if it's strong enough of a pull and uh, strong enough of a draw, we're all three going to pile in the car and go to that one show. So, and, and here's the thing, in all fairness, I mean, no disrespect to anybody. We do, we too, we do take pride in how we cover Georgia wrestling, that we want to watch. There's a novel idea. Watch the product that we're covering. However, when we're picking, for me, driving two or three hours, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be kind of selective in that. And so you got you're gonna have to, as a promotion, put on a show that I'm willing to say, all right, I'm gonna have to leave work early probably, and get down and see your show. Like I'm not gonna drive three hours to just see anything, you know. Correct. Um. But we love making the drives. Uh, you and I also love food. We love barbecue. So I want to get to Deep South. It's at a barbecue restaurant. I want to try some of the barbecue. Uh, and then one that we're, uh, you're actually, uh, spoiler alert, maybe hitting a show tonight. Yes. Uh, I and I and just got at- word, yeah. So wrestling at Southern. Uh, it's, it's the, I think, like if I'm wrong, I apologize in advance. I think it's like the one of their last wrestling at Southern standalone shows as they merge into pool their resources, whatever the term is, the official term is with turnbuckle championship wrestling. Um, so I was kind of like, I kind of want to see one of these shows before they, you know, become, cause I, it's good. Look, I, I have a vibe. It'll be a totally different vibe and feeling when mm-hmm. the, when the, uh, when the, the changeover happens. So yeah, I did reach out to Myron and said, Hey, let's, let's try to hit the show. It's a we're recording Monday morning. The show is Monday night. Obviously the show drops on Tuesday, so I can't tell you what happened. Uh, but I absolutely want to go check it out. And so I, we're going to head up to Athens tonight and check it out on a Monday. Yeah, that is, um, that's definitely something, been something on our to-do list and, uh, excited to see that any, any others. I mean, that was kind of my list. Any others that are on your radar? Uh, I did GPW. That was one, you know, the Georgia premiere. I had wanted to get back out and see them, so I, I checked that off the list. Um, look, Kevin Ryan's promotion, Forever Pro, mm-hmm. they ran and like I, you know, look, I they they're putting on some cool stuff. They're bringing in some really cool names. Um, trying to, you know, I mean, I know, look, Coastal Empire, yeah, you know, the yeah. uh, Zach Mosley's promotion down there. I, I, a lot of cool stuff. I saw they're bringing in Hunter James. He's working down there, so. Um, there's a lot. That's the problem is there's just so many that we yeah. want to get out to see. Uh, 
you know, Kraken had their title tournament this weekend. I, on my way back from Orlando, passed through, saw where Tifton, Georgia is and realized, oh my, this is quite a bit, <laughs> about quite a ways from yeah. Clemson. Kraken's um, on the list 100%. Like, I got to get out and see one of their shows. Uh, look, that was one of my hopefuls that I was going to do on Saturday, but when the plans changed that I ended up in Chattanooga, it was, I missed, that was the other one. I missed, it was Kraken and Southern Fried is the, the, the double hitter hopes that I had. But um, listen, we talked about this a little bit off air. I, it is odd. I understand the logics. I'll look at, you don't have to send the hate mail to tapped out pot at Gmail. I understand the logics of the dates. But there will be weekends where there are just stacked with shows. And then you'll go into a weekend. There's like, who's running this weekend? I mean, and, and look, I get it. These Southern, yeah, SCAs are every week, so we understand that. We're not dismissing them. But we're like, hey, they're every Friday. Um, so there's that. But they're, like Saturday night, you might look at us and then like it's a – because God forbid we have personal lives that we have to attend to stuff to, uh, you know. So – if that happens to fall on the weekend, there's eight shows. What are we supposed to do? Because then it's like the next weekend, there's nothing or one show, you know, for the whole entire weekend. That's that's where the struggle happens. It'd be nice if promoters, it's not going to happen. I understand it, but, you know, I can dream. Could promoters get together and, hey, like you run this and you, you know, like stagger the dates out or whatever? Um, I know venues and commitments and all that kind of stuff come into play, but that would be awesome. Yeah, I think it's also key. Because cause some of these promotions, there's not really another wrestling promotion within an hour. So especially if you get South Georgia, West Georgia, and all those places. So, but you got to talk, you got to look at the local non-wrestling calendar. Like, is there a big high school football game? Or is there a big craft fair? Are there other things happening that weekend that are going to pull potential customers away from your show? It's a, you got to remember... You're running a business. You're trying to draw as many people as possible. You have to think about the factors of that. Uh, speaking of drawing as many people as possible, fans, we are trying to get as many people as possible watching and listening to this podcast. So do not forget YouTube, Tapped Out Pod. We are everywhere. We would love, you heard these great questions from these loyal listeners, Tapped Out Pod at gmail.com. We are so grateful for your support. We're so grateful for our patrons, many of them who've now become a part of uh, Coffee and Cross Faces. So if you're a patron, you've been seeing that. Uh, that's just a great way to kind of really, really engage with the show and talk about some fun topics with Nick. Yeah, man. Look, I've had some fun doing these uh, where these guys, you know, a couple guys have come on. I've done some with some talents. Uh, we're It's going to expand even more. I've almost finalized that one show idea that we talked about i just i can't disclose a ton of it yet because we haven't inked it down to the to the t but look i mean the coffee and cross faces are good little it's we just if you have something you just want to talk about mm -hmm. we we do it uh, i need good internet connection with you and, a, and an iphone slash messenger or something usually works pretty simple like if you've watched them you've seen it's not very complicated um whether it's old school topics we've done, we're talking about reactions to current stuff. Um, there's a couple dropping this. Well, I dropped one Saturday. One's dropping tomorrow. So, I mean, on and on and on. Like, I, 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 we, we want to be very interactive. That's kind of the, the the plan here. So between social media and listen, guys have, uh, I know. Look, like Derwin Baker's a friend of the show. He's been emailing for years. You know, he's been for a while now, and he gets it. He enjoys the fact that I will sit there and reply on my phone to you know the tapped out pod email address like he sends emails and i respond spawn back to him and the people that are sending the questions they appreciate the fact that we're talking about them you know and answering the questions so keep those questions coming tapped out pod and gmail.com and uh i try to be as active as i can in responding um you know if i don't answer i promise you that means i'm tied up with something <laughs> and promotion send us send us your dates send us your locations like we said uh, i actually have created a google map with uh of all the, you know, of all the promotions I know about. Um, so yeah, it's a, we're having, we're having a ball doing this and we do it for all of you, uh, the fans. Cause we're just like you, we're just a couple of fans who enjoy talking about 
wrestling. So we hope everybody has a great week. Get out and see some wrestling. Share, share, share on Facebook. Uh, but for Nick McDaniel, I'm Heath Mulliken, and thanks for listening to Tapped In Indie Wrestling. Thank you.